Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Danish product called Brylandkir. Multi-point selector type 1544. And this one is a little bit special. You can see balance resolution in percentage for 120 ohm gauge. So the idea is each of the 10 inputs, 0 to 9, obviously, <laughs> I mean, normal people would count from 1 to 10, but no way. This is the digital age where we, of course, count from 0. <laughs> anyway, those bridges can be a full bridge or a half bridge. So you have, of course, already figured this out. This is for strain gauges for a weight scales. And uh, yeah, they can, of course, be a half and full bridge. So I think this will be for some sort of automatic uh, test equipment. And the idea is you can remote scan continuous single and reset the scan and you can set the step interval in seconds so that will be the time per channel this one probably reads out something maybe the number maybe the time maybe the i don't know exactly what this reads out well i think we need to open and investigate the status of this unit before just powering it up and also, this is probably not how it's supposed to be. Oh, this one is missing a little front thingy. Oh, also here. I think I got those uh, stocked, so that will be fine. And uh, of course, we can on off calibrate, and then you pull down to this calibration, I guess. And we also have this uh, balance. So this is probably a way to pull it a little bit into zero or something like that but i guess this whole unit must be used with 120 ohm gauges here at the back we cannot be surprised to find all those connectors banana connectors for each of the 10 sensors and uh, Again, it really takes up a lot of space here and it's not super user friendly. If you want to change something here, you need to plug in bananas or something like that. It could have been a little bit smarter with just a little four pin uh, something. We can um, see we got a little bit of connectivity. So the 1545, is that a rider or something like that? So there's a digital bus for remote control, and then there is this 1526 readout unit, which I also got, and I think that will uh, read out the values. And the, here is, of course, a also a direct interface to the many, uh, maybe there's just relays, really, that just bridge every of these but it's, of course, going to be some super, super special relays or something like that. Well, and the voltage selector is set for 220. So this reveals it was a long time ago this one was powered up because today you would dial this into uh, 240. So I better do that right away so I don't forget it. I don't know if I'm a little bit disappointed. It's a little bit far from what I expected. Well, I did, of course, expect all those nice, nice multi-turns. And they seem to be from 1974. 500 ohms. Alrighty then. And there you have it. A front panel circuit board where all um, the switches here, they're soldered directly into the circuit board. So I guess it's not the most easy to service. And see, here's my little 
problem. So I need to just pull this out and something here. How is this working? I actually, ah, they are all just pressed in. Look at that. Because the potentiometers just spin this nice and freely, all I need to do is try and bend these in without breaking or anything like that and just uh, try and put it back. Let's, uh, oh, damn it. <laughs> it's typical. Uh, th those are made of brass, as you can see, and they just crack. How annoying. So that is not how it's supposed to be fixed. I will look at that in a minute. Well, the state of this unit is a little bit um, sad, as you can see here, the corrosion on this connector part, but also everywhere on the inside, we can see um, corrosion really, really bad. Oh my God. And uh, what is that? That will be Beckman displays three digit Beckman and a little high voltage counter drive or something for the Beckmans. And that, look at that. It goes to, see, seven segment decoding. And then some more stuff that is related to the display thing here. So that is good. So maybe it can read out something. And uh, those chips, uh, uh, counters and stuff like that, they will be from 1974, something like that. And um, there's another little circuit board here with a top solder mask. What exactly is this? I don't know. But I've checked out some of the date codes. See, 82. And I think there was uh, 78 something. I think I found 82 as well on that one. Oh, yeah. Look at that corrosion and all the down here. It's really, really bad. And also extremely much out of focus. Let's get some light so we can see. Maybe it will focus if we hit it with... How annoying is this? Anyway, about those relays... I was, of course, also expecting some super, super sexy solutions from Pulian Care. But I just find, uh, well, maybe those are higher quality relays. But again, you can see all this... It looks like it was outside in the rain. See, the rain drops was like falling over the circuit board. And how is that really possible when the lid is more or less completely closed, isn't it? And this was probably the corner that was down. Look at that. It's really, really badly corroded. Oh no, this is really a sad day. Because I kind of love to play around with the Brilliant Care equipment. It's always a lot of fun. And uh, now it's going to take me forever to try and power this up because of all this. The power supply here is pretty much okay. I don't see anything smoked. So, after a lot of cleaning, I now feel <laughs> I feel a little bit lucky. So, let's try and connect mains and then and look, ooh, it's oh, okay, so it skips something. I need to put these in on. I don't know, can you see those LEDs? But it looks like it's skipping one, isn't it? Oh, it jumps! Oh, it's here, is the problem. 
No? Why are you skipping something? So number five. Okay, so you can... You, but you can select it like that. And there you have it. So here is the readout for the selected channel. But why? Uh, why is it we have five? Okay, it goes from zero to five. But why is it we have three digits? That is some funny thing, isn't it? So let's go back. Eight, nine, and then zero. So there's no point in having three digits unless they're using the same readout for all sorts of other uh, products. But I will definitely try and see what is the problem with number... F no! Look at that! I repaired it! Magic, magic! <laughs> so all in all, we have a relay box where we can select something. And this is the step interval. Half a second. Or... Oi. That is some sexy machine. And you can so you can use this to make music, especially if you can uh, look at that. Here you turn them off. So it actually works. I already love it. <laughs> it could have been really cool if I could use a variable or maybe there is an external input or something like that because we got the remote. Oh, what is that? Remote. What is that doing? Single. Reset. So this starts, okay. Well, well, I am learning every second what this thing can do. <laughs> I wonder. Yeah. All right, so, so far we know what this thing can do and that is pretty cool already. This is a little bit funny. I'm running a the zero one two zero one two program at the moment, and this is of course the common output. So, see, every time it is here, it, we have a connection, and then it's the next one, and so forward. And it's of course the same with number two. But number three is funny. See. There's a connection all the time between all of them here. And down here is the same again. Nice switch. So there's a common supply or a common ground that goes to all the sensors. And then, uh, well, that's not switched. And of course there's no connection like that. But here you have the offset. And you can see here, is my 400 ohms and of course if I dial around it will take a, it will take forever to do that I guess maybe it has something to do with the calibrate hmm that is weird maybe it's between these two ah then it needs to be Selected or something. Well, we have 400 ohms between these two, and it's the same with everything else. So that means no matter what is selected, I got 400 ohms. Really? I would expect those potentiometers to do some funky stuff. But obviously we need some of the others and then it's between those and then they are doing their 
fancy smancy thing. All right. So I think that is more or less what I can tell the world about this really funny old and care multi point selector thingy for strain gauges. So thank you for watching. And I hope you had a little bit of fun. See you around. Bye bye.